can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. It's very important that you pay attention. You came to be empowered, and the tool of empowerment are two. One is the ear, the other one is the eye. If you are distracted by what you see, as you're looking around, you can't be empowered. If you're also distracted hearing something else, you also cannot be empowered, though you are here. If your body is here and your eyes and your ears are not here, you will lose out completely. And I'm very sure you did not leave your house to come here and waste your time. You came here to be empowered. You got the letter. Your parents allowed you to come because they wanted you to turn out right. They wanted you to be better. They wanted you to plan for your future, be involved in planning for your future. And that is why you are here. So I'm going to be sharing a few things with you. And then when I'm done, we're going to open you up and begin to explain to you the different scholarship programs that we have, the different mentorship programs that we have, the different avenues which you can be helped after this program. Because it's not a one-off. Just like you are in your secondary school, you didn't just go to GS1 and that was the end. It was a journey. And we are not interested in one-off. We are interested in taking you on a journey that will ensure that your life is better. Not just better, that your life is best. We've been involved in youth development for a very long time. We started, I think, sometime in 2010 or so. Uh, and we have worked with young people, both in secondary schools and in, in the university. In the university project, we were doing an anchor project, employability project in different universities, and we've done the same in secondary school. I'm going to bring up one of our impact projects, one of our examples. Uh, when we had this same project in 2010, this particular lady was sitting like one of you. And then, where is Peace? Is she around? Please get her. And this lady, she's an example. I want you to see how your life will turn out right. She was in that project in 2010, followed through the whole project, and she got into university because when she was with us, she was like you, secondary school. She got into the university through all the trainings and the skill and wisdom programs we're doing. She got into university. She's graduated from the university. She's now married. She has children. And guess the beautiful thing? She came here with 80 people that the same thing we taught her she went back to Itolo Girls School and she began to teach them exactly what we taught. And now she's here with 80 of them. That is our reward. That's the beauty of what we want to see. We want to see many of you young men and young women. Five years later, six years later, when we have projects like this, you will come back with 20, 30 people. For some, you're going to bring your nation. Because some of you are going to be presidents, some of you are going to be governors, some of you are going to be senators, some of you are going to be business magnates, some of you are going to own companies. But when you own that company, you're supposed to do exactly what we're doing in your life for them. So this is peace, please come up. Please help, appreciate her, put your hands together. This is peace. Like I said, she was in secondary school just like you. She went through her training project, got into the university, gave her life to Jesus Christ through the same project, got into university, and has gone back to the school. And the testimony is that, like I said, she came in here with how many of them? 80 of them. Hey, where are they? They are here. Stand up, stand up. Let all of you stand up. Can you please turn to them and wave and clap and shout and jubilate for what God has done? God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord keep using you in the name of Jesus. Amen. What God has done for her, God is about to do for you. What God is doing today is preparing you for the journey ahead. What God is doing today is helping you to be that person that will change a nation. You're that person that will change a city. You're that person that will change an organization. 
You are that person that will change a family. And so that is why you are here to be empowered. But I want to explain to you how life works. If you don't know how a car works, you cannot use that car to your advantage. The car would be in your house. You would have the keys. The car would have fuel in it. But yet, you will not be able to drive that car. Do you know why? There's no problem with the car. The only problem is that you don't know how cars work. And therefore, the car would not be to your advantage. The same thing with life. There are people that life has not been kind to. It's not because there's a problem with life. It is because they don't understand how life works. And I'm about to show you how life works so that you can take advantage of that knowledge that most people don't have. And you are young now. This is the time to turn life to work in your favor. And so I'm going to show you how life works. And if you actually look around, you'll understand. What I'm saying is not far-fetched. It's practical. It's something you can actually see. It's something you can relate to it. We do recognize that God is the creator of everyone. Somebody created this planet. His name is God. Through Jesus Christ. But there is a way that he made this life to work. There's something called laws, or they are called laws. And God put laws to control this whole life so that life becomes predictable. You can predict what tomorrow will become. Maybe not in the tiny details, but in the generality, you can predict life. And that is because of laws. Let me explain to you what laws are. Laws are the principles that guide life. Those of you in physics will know about the 12 laws of physics. How many of you are studying physics in senior school? You know about the principles of physics. You know those laws, right? You know the four laws of thermodynamics. You know the three laws of, of motion all by um, Isaac Newton and all of that. But I'm sure even if you didn't study physics, at least you know the law of gravity, correct? You know how the law works. Who knows what the law of gravity is? Although when Newton was writing, he called it the law of universal gravitation, but that's too big for you. But we normally will call it the law of gravity. What does that mean? The law of gravity just simply states that anything that goes up must come down because there is a force on the ground called the force of gravity. It pulls everything down to the ground, right? The thing about laws is that man did not create the laws. The thing about laws is that it is not a respecter of time and place. The thing about laws is that if you go to America, the law of gravity will work. If you go to London, the law of gravity will work. If you go to Ibadan, the law of gravity will work. If you're old, the law of gravity will work. If you are young, the law of gravity will work. If you know about the law of gravity, it will work. If you don't know about the law of gravity, it will work. Is that true? So the law of gravity means that if I get on top of this building and I step off the ledge, what will happen to me? I'll do what? Why would I fall? Because there is a law in operation. It's called the law of universal gravitation or commonly called the law of gravity. You cannot change laws. They were there before you were born and they'll be there after you are gone. That law was put in motion by the one that created this whole universe. But guess what? That is not the only law that governs life. There are many of them that govern life, so many of them. But there are two I want to pay attention to today because they are the ones that will determine the outcome of your life. Remember what I said, you have to know how life works. And I said that life is controlled by laws. It is the laws that make us be able to predict what will happen next year and in 10 years time. So there are two laws I want to pay attention to. One of them has a lot of names. In science, they call it one particular name and I'm gonna tell you what it is. And then in, in religion, they also have that name. And then according to the Bible, the Bible gives it a separate name, but they are all discussing the same thing. In science, it is called the law of cause and effect. In many religions, they call it the law of karma, but they're talking about the same thing. In the Bible, it is called the law of sowing and reaping. 
they are all discussing the same thing. Now, the thing about laws is that it is universal. Whether you are a Christian or a Muslim or you worship idols, whatever it is, the laws are applying. That is why if you go to the Bible, they call the law of sowing and reaping, Galatians 6, 7. If you go to so many religions, the Eastern religion, they call it the law of karma. They are discussing the same thing. Like I said, if you go to science, they call it the law of cause and effect. Let me explain that law to you and show you how it works. Simply put, this life is all about reaping what you sow. Any single thing you sow, you must reap it. If you sow good, two days later, ten days later, fifteen days later, that's exactly what you are going to reap. It is a law that governs life. How you use your youth will determine how tomorrow will turn out. Nobody wakes up and says, I am going to be an armed robber. Nobody wakes up and says, I'm going to be a cult boy. It is just one wrong decision you take. And that decision is a seed you have sown in the ground. If it's in science, they'll tell you that anything you put in the universe, it will come back to you. It is a law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you are going to repeat. Even if nobody sees you, nobody was there when you were sowing it. Whether it is bad or it is good, as long as you have done that thing, it is so serious that even your thoughts are a seed. The things you are thinking about, you are sowing a seed. The things you are saying, you are sowing a seed. The actions you are carrying out, you are sowing a seed single thing you do. The Bible tells us, he said, don't be deceived. The reason he's saying don't be deceived is because people think that that law won't work. So people think they can do things and get away with it. They can commit murder and get away with it. They can lie and get away with it. They can cheat and get away with it. And so the Bible says, don't be deceived. Don't let anybody deceive you. The law of karma. He said, don't let anybody deceive you. Whether you're a Buddha, Buddhist person, or whatever religion, say, don't let anybody deceive you. He said, the law of karma will catch up with you. If you go to science, they'll tell you the same thing. The law of cause and effect. So science says, anything you see is an effect of a cause. What it means is that if I hit this pulpit now, it is a cause. I'm going to feel the effect. So what it means is that if I start smoking, it's a cause, it's a seed. It's going to come back as lung cancer. If I open myself to premarital sex early, I'm 11, I'm 12, I'm 13, I'm engaging in premarital sex, I'm not married, but I'm sleeping with people, it is a seed you are sowing. Nobody will see you. But guess what? In this world, there are unseen eyes that work. Scientists have tested it. They've said it is true. So they call it cause and effect. Other religions have tested it over time. They've seen that it works, so they call it karma. The author of the Bible himself, God Almighty himself, is the one that set that law in motion. And he sees that it works, so he called them the law of sowing and reaping. So whatever you sow today as a young person, you are going to reap it in the future. Now, the second law I want to talk about, and the reason I want to talk about that law is because of this sentence. It said, do not be deceived. Why did they say, do not be deceived? Most people assume they can do things and get away with it. That's what most people think. Do you know why I know most people think that way? Because people live carelessly. People live as though they will never be caught. People live as though they are larger than life. They can insult the teacher. They can insult their parents. They can disobey. Just like I've said, don't stand up. Some people will still stand up because they don't believe this law. That's why you need to understand the second law I'm about to teach you because the two of them go hand in hand. So because people do things, they don't see the reaping effect immediately. They continue to do evil. And therefore, some people, they do good. They don't see the effect immediately and then they get tired. There are some of you that are in school, you are good students. You don't disobey the teacher. You obey your parents. You do all the good things. Year one, year two, year three. You've not seen any particular benefit of doing good. So you get tired 
in SS1, you decide, you know what? Ah, me, I'm not doing this again, no. Guys, I I'm waiting to happen. Who they run this town? Then you find out it's one boy called Skeleton. Then you now go and join Skeleton's gang. Or you find out it's another boy whose name is called Score X. You go and join that gang. Why? Because in JS1, JS2, JS3, you were doing good. They laughed at you. They mocked you. They laughed at you for being a virgin. They laughed at you for not cheating in exam. So you decided there's no benefit in this thing. So you stop halfway. And that the ones that are doing evil, they continue with what they are doing because they've not yet seen this law in operation. Do you know why? There's another law in operation, which the moment you understand that second law, you begin to obey this first one. What is that law? It is called the law of gestation. I explain what it is. It's called the law of gestation. Do you know what that law of gestation means? It means that everything in life has a period, a set period for maturity. Meaning that if a woman gets pregnant, the gestation period is nine months. That baby must come out. If you plant corn in the ground, corn has a gestation period. Everything in life has a gestation period. It is that period that it will begin to form. Now, if you don't understand the gestation period, what you do is you keep on doing good. After some time, you'll get tired. In fact, the next verse to this says, don't be weary in doing good. The reason it says don't be weary because he understands that if you don't know that there's a gestation period, for some of the evil we do, the gestation period can be nine months. For some, the period can be three years. For some, it can be two years. For some, it can be one year. Because you don't understand that there is a law called gestation period. Meaning, for some people, when you do something wrong now, in two seconds, you will feel the impact. For some other people, their gestation period, or for that sin, their gestation period might be nine months. Because you don't understand that something is building, you continue doing the wrong thing. Example, pregnancy. If you get pregnant, you go to the doctor, the doctor says you are pregnant, and you don't understand the law of gestation. You look at your tummy, it's not getting big. You look around you, you don't have a baby. The tendency to think what the doctor said is not true, is very high. Why? You don't understand that in nine months time, that thing you have hidden will come to the surface. That's the law of gestation. It means that there is a period before your good or your bad will show. Now the truth is that that gestation period in physical things, we know what it is. For instance, I use pregnancy, it's nine months. If you look at some animals, they have some animals have 200 days gestation period. I think an elephant has about 200 days before it gives birth, right? But when it concerns spiritual things, we don't know how long it will last. Actually, people don't get paid for evil immediately. According to the scripture, people don't pay, get paid for evil immediately. They don't. And also, people don't get paid for good immediately. That's why somebody said, God may not pay you every day. God may not pay you at the end of every month. But when God pays, the whole world will know that God has paid you. Because people don't understand that there is payday, they misbehave. Because they don't understand that there is gestation period, they misbehave. Now let me explain. Some people have done a lot of things, gotten involved in, like I said, primitive cells, cultism. Some people, your parents have taken you to fetish places. You've gotten yourself involved in fetish things. All kinds of things you have done. Let me tell you, I can predict 100%. Those things will come after you. All of those things, all those addiction, all those drinking, masturbation, pornography, all of those things, they are going to come after you. But there's something that Jesus did. That's why Jesus introduced the law of gestation. That middle period, in between when you have committed the crime and when the effect of the crime shows up, that middle period is called the gestation period. But that middle period is called the period of repentance. It's the period of repentance. If 
you can be wise. I have done this evil thing. I have done this wrong thing. I am a liar. I am a thief. I am immoral. I cheat in my exams. I'm involved in premarital sex. I do all kinds of things. I carry charm. I'm a cult boy. I do this, I do this. And if you can be wise to know, in between when I committed the crime and when the punishment to show up, that the gestation period is given to me by God to make correction, to make repentance. If you do not do repentance in that period, that punishment will definitely show up. That is why you look around. You see people, they labor for you. They have money or no problem. All of a sudden, one sickness will start from nowhere. They will go from one hospital to the next hospital. No way. Why are they not able to get help? Because during the gestation period, they didn't take advantage of it. They waited until the punishment has already shown up. Many people are trying to look for repentance when the punishment has already shown up. The reason you are a young person, the reason God is bringing this information to you is that the first empowerment you need is the knowledge of how life works. So that now that you're young, you start sowing the right seeds. Now that you're young, you start doing the right thing and you will just be patient. Now that you're young, you start doing and investing in the right thing because your life has a circle, right? When you are young, it is called the season of investment. It is what you are investing now that will show up tomorrow. If you are investing good, you are doing well, you don't have a problem. Give it two years, give it three years, give it five years, give it seven years. After some time, you'll start seeing the benefits. If you are doing wrong and you continue to do wrong and you don't take advantage of that period of repentance, I can guarantee because even if the Bible is wrong, let's forget about the Bible. Even if it is wrong, because some of you say it's too spiritual. That's why I told you, for those who don't believe in the Bible, at least you believe science. Science cannot be wrong. Okay, for those of you that dream, be, don't believe science, you at least believe the Bible. The Bible tells you whatever a man sows in this life, he must repeat. Okay, maybe somebody says, eh, I don't believe the Bible and I don't believe science. Will all the other religions also be lying? All of them, they all combine. God, science, Buddhism, all of these people, they all combine to lie. If they had lied, somebody would have said, no. The law of karma doesn't work. The law of sin and reaping doesn't work. But I'm yet to see that one person that will challenge these laws. These laws of science. Scientists do not go to the Bible. They observe life and they say this thing is true. That is why, because of the law of gestation, every woman knows in nine months she's going to the hospital. Nobody needs to tell her. She already knows. That means from the eighth month, she'll start packing her bag because the result of what had happened before is about to show up. Everybody in this world agrees. Whatever you sow, what you read. The only difference between the law of science and the law of karma, you put them on one side, and then the law of God, there's one difference. The law of karma does not give you time to repent. It tells you anything you do, it will show up. The law of science, cause and effect, tells you anything you do, it will show up. But it's only Jesus Christ that tells us, yes, when you sow, you will reap. But I give you a gestation period for repentance. I give you a gestation period before the maturity of your sin, before the maturity of your evil, before the maturity of your lying, your cheating, your fornication, whatever. Before that maturity, he said there's somebody called Jesus. He has the power to forgive. He has the power to cleanse. If you look at all the religions in the world, it is only one. Christianity, which is not a religion, is a relationship. It is only that one, one man that says, I can actually forgive. There's power in my blood. It doesn't matter what you have done. If you come to me, Jesus, 
I am willing to forgive. I don't care how terrible your sins are. I don't care how bad. I am willing to forgive. As long as you do it before the payment and the penalty for the things you have done, before it gets to that point, he said, if you can come to me on time, I will save you. Let me tell you, some of you are young. Based on what you are already doing, the future is not bright. Based on the seed you are already sowing, the future is not bright. It's only one solution. One person promised, if you can come to me, I can turn your entire life in the right direction. I am a testimony of that. When I was young, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Committed completely to him. Because when I was much younger, my dad, though he was a military officer, educated and all of that, he got us initiated into, you know, really fetish things. We didn't even know what he was. We didn't even think it was anything bad. So based on that action alone, based on getting involved in all of those practices, no matter how educated I become, no matter how rich I become, you see those fetish practices we did, it has the capacity to bring me down. That's how many of you are. You might go to school, go to university, do all of those things. But there are some things you have done in the past. There are some things your parents have done in you that will make sure that all your other efforts in the physical, it will scatter it, it will liquidate it, you will never rise. That is why Jesus said, if you've done something wrong, you can come to me and I can change your life. And then the reason we do this first is because any other empowerment we are giving you, for instance, we have scholarship programs that is open. They're going to come and tell you about it. We have training projects, skill and wisdom projects. How many of you are in our, in our skill project? Those in GSAP and, and uh, BSAP, can I see your hand? So let me see your hand very well. BSAP, GSAP, stand up. I can see all of you. Yes. Stand very well so they can see you. Where are my AJ people? AJ, you are, stand up. Where are the AJ people? They are the loudest. Can I hear a big shout out from AJ? Please, can you help me appreciate my AJ people? Clap for them. So we're in your school, you have your teacher there, your school every day. So this is the project we're doing. We're doing a lot of skill acquisition and all of that. We have all of those projects. But the truth is this. If you, no matter the kind of skill acquisition you are doing, if you don't take care of the spiritual side, right? The things you are sowing, it will show up. If you like, learn all the skills, learn hairdressing, learn makeup, learn those things. You will still not rise. Why? Because of the law of cause and effect. Because of the things you've done. Skill will not save you. Education will not save you. Traveling abroad will not save you. Before I round up, I'm going to give you a testimony of one woman that traveled abroad. Nobody told me this is she telling by herself. I went to, I was in Canada and she was telling me uh, something happened to her. I said, what is it? She was living in Nigeria and she decided to go for greener pastures. And so she said, oh, let me go for greener pastures. Herself and her husband, they sold all their property in Nigeria and they traveled abroad. And when they traveled abroad, they went to Canada. They decided that what they were going to do, they're going to uh, sell Nigerian food, which is a very good business abroad. Most people that live abroad don't want to eat all these white people's food. If you eat it one day, two days, you too, you'll be tired. Because they don't put pepper in their food. Their food is somehow. Forget what they show you on the TV, their food is somehow. So most Nigerians prefer to eat Nigerian food, right? So it's a very good business. And so you know what they did? They sold all their property, used all their money, and bought Nigerian food. They put it in a container. When they got to the border in Canada to offload the container, the Canadian authorities opened the container and they saw ants everywhere. So the authorities said, we cannot allow this container to come into the border. 
they sank the um, what's that? They sank the container in the sea. If it's Nigeria, they say, okay, don't worry, let's bribe somebody. But you know there, there's something like bribe, so they put it in the water. That's all their money gone, all their money liquidated. They thought it was a joke. So they borrowed money, they gathered money, they begged friends, they begged people. Meanwhile, they're already owing. And they were very rich. They borrowed, already they are in debt. They borrowed money again, gathered, bought things, bought all sorts of rice, bought everything. They had gone to the bank and they had done a business plan. The bank said, if you do this, it will work. Everybody said it will work. So they went, you know what they did the second time? They bought an um, insecticide and sprayed in the container. When they got to Canada, the Canadian people opened the container and guess what? Insecticide was smelling. Now I want you to think about this. If you flit your room in the night by 6 p.m., how long does the smell last? How long? One hour. So just imagine, they sprayed the whole container with insecticide. That ship traveled for three months on the high sea, got to Canada border. They opened the container door. A smell that will last for one hour lasted for three months. To the extent that the Canadian official could smell it, it was so bad. They said, this can't enter Canada. They sank their container a second time. Can somebody please explain to me, how is it even possible that you sprayed insecticide in a container? Three months later, it is still smelling. There are things that are beyond the physical. Those people did not deal with something in the spiritual and so they thought it was still a joke this time they are already in debt number two they now worked hard borrowed money went to the bank told all the stories the bank still gave them money again they came to nigeria a third time packed all the things bought stockfish bought crayfish bought everything they put it in a container this time they did not there were no ants they did not spray it. what they did was they tied all the things very very well they got to the border the border official said, oh, okay, no insecticide, no ants, bring it into, the, into Canada. They were very happy. Say, thank God. Oh, uh, they were celebrating. Guess what? They put it in a particular house. They slept in the night. When they slept, they just said, boom. They went to that place. Guess what? The container has sunk on the ground. It doesn't matter what those people try. And it was a lady telling me, it doesn't matter what they try. It doesn't matter how much money they borrow. It doesn't matter how high they are. That thing they do not deal with in the spiritual realm will keep fighting them. What is Jesus saying to you today as a roundup? At point A, you've committed crime. Make no mistake. Don't be deceived. You will pay for your sins. You will pay for your crime. It will come after you. At some point in this life, under this earth, it will come after you. But, somebody say but. Somebody say but. There is a gestation period that your sin is waiting to mature. That period, before it fully matures, you can come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I have done wrong. I have sown wrong seeds. I have done bad things. But I want you to help me. I want you to rescue me. I want you to change me. I want you to give me a new life. Give me a new chapter. Give me a new page. Let me start again. In the physical, you can't start again. But in the realm of the spirit, as far as Jesus is concerned, you can start again. So maybe you're here, you know, ah, hey, hey, it's me they are talking about. I have so many wrong seeds. Many. Nobody knows. But guess what? Nobody needs to know. There is a law in operation that knows. There is a spiritual place where they write everything that you are doing wrong. The only time it can be wiped away is if you go to Jesus. He's the only one that promised to 
I've not seen any other person that says, I can cleanse you, I can forgive you. What other people say is they'll tell you, don't worry, if you have done wrong, let your good be more than your wrong, and then you'll come to heaven. <laughs> when will your good be more than your wrong? In five minutes, you have lied ten times. In one day, you have done so many bad things. Even in your heart, you have insulted people. Even as I'm talking, you're looking at me and saying, hmm, what does she think she's doing? Don't you know that that thing is wrong? How can your good ever be more than your bad? Just tell me, even using your own life, it's not possible. That's why Jesus said, I'm not going to tell you for your good to be more than your bad. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to wipe away your bad completely. It will not be remembered anymore. If you go to hell, it will not be remembered. If you come on earth, it will not be remembered. If you go to heaven, it will not be remembered. If you come to me, I guarantee you. If you go to others, I can't guarantee. But if you come to me, I guarantee you absolute forgiveness of sin. It is when we have done this, then any other training, equipment, empowerment cannot work. If you don't do this part first, if Jesus doesn't go into your heart and remove that stony heart, if you like, you finish from school, those things, they will wait for you. You will finish building and acquiring wealth, it will come after you. It will show up. So that is why there's this period. He's giving you the gestation period before your sins show up. Before they show up. Before the punishment for the things you have done shows up. There's an in-between part. That is the part called the path of repentance. And so I'm going to give you an opportunity to take advantage of that period of gestation. If you're in the audience and you're saying, I'm the one that needs a new page. I'm the one that wants Jesus to wash me and forgive me. I want a new life. I want to start again. I've made a lot of mistakes. I cannot pay for my mistakes. I've done so many wrong things. Where do I want to start from? There are some things I'm too ashamed to tell my friends. I'm too ashamed to tell my parents. Guess what? Your friends don't need to know. Your parents don't need to know. The universe knows. God knows. The realm of the spirit, they know. And your life is an open book. Everything you have thought about, somebody has seen it. But it's not a human being. Every single thing you have done in this world, somebody knows about it. It's not a human being. So this is the time to wipe the pages clean. If you want to start afresh, you want today to be the beginning of a new day. Put in another way, you want to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I've done many bad things. I've heard you can forgive me. I've heard you can cleanse me. And I believe it all of my heart. And I'm ready to start again. The beautiful thing about what we do is that we are not just going to lead you to Jesus. We're going to walk with you on the journey until you become like peace. Who followed through and now she's married, she has children, and she has gone back to do the same thing that we did. She has gone to rescue people, and today they are here. And if, like my pastor was saying, saying, if it is only because of this one, I'm glad. If it's only because of this one, if it's only because of this one, I know in five years' time, we're going to come back and celebrate all of you. But if you want to start afresh with Jesus, I want you to stand up where you are very quickly. While the rest of us bow down our heads, I want you to stand up right where you are, all over this hall. If you want to start afresh with Jesus. Now, I want you to understand what I'm saying. I didn't say everybody should stand up. Let's sit down. Listen to me carefully. I didn't say you should start talking. Listen to me carefully so that before you stand up, you know what you are doing. If you are in the audience, you heard what I said. And you are saying to yourself, ah, I need to start again with Jesus. I need my sins forgiven. I recognize I'm a sinner. I've done many wrong things. Many things I cannot voice out. Many I've even forgotten. But today, I want Jesus to forgive me. Today, I want Jesus to cleanse me and give me a new life, a brand new life. I want to start again, just like I started again. The one talking to you started again. Maybe you're like that. I want you to stand to your feet. 
You want Jesus to give you a new life. I want you to now stand. The reason I emphasize it again is so that you know what you are doing when you stand. You want to give your heart to Jesus. You want Jesus to forgive you for your sins. I'm hoping that those standing understood what I said. If you want to start again, you want Jesus to forgive you, you recognize you are a sinner. You need help. No other person can help you. I want you to stand. If you don't want, I want you to sit. Now, if you are standing, the ushers will help you make your way down to the altar. I want you to come to Jesus. He's standing right here with me. I want you to come to Jesus. Wherever you are, all over, I want you to come to Jesus. Come to the altar. Come to Jesus. Come to keep coming wherever. Down, left, all over the auditorium. Come to Jesus. The one that can forgive and change lives. What can wash you want to surrender to Jesus. This is the time. You want to surrender to Jesus. This is the time. This is the time. Keep coming from everywhere. Keep coming. Counselors, get ready. Do it quietly. Do it quietly. Do it quietly. Ushers, help us to maintain. Let help them. Let them get here. I surrender all to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will never love and trust Him. Keep coming to Jesus. Keep coming to Jesus. I see some people running to Jesus. I see them running and saying, Jesus, I've done wrong. Jesus, I've done wrong. Forgive me. Keep coming to Jesus. Come fast. Run to Jesus. This is the gestation period. This is the time of repentance. This is the time of repentance. Come to Jesus before it is too late. Before it is too late, come. I want you to come to the one that is able to save your soul. Come to Jesus. Wherever you are in the auditorium, come to Jesus. We're going to walk with you through this journey. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let the devil win the argument and tell you that it doesn't matter because it matters. Because it matters. Because it matters. Because it matters. Don't let the devil win that argument and tell you, don't worry, you can continue your ways. Don't let the devil win the argument and tell you that you can help yourself. Don't let him lie to you and tell you you can do it tomorrow or you can do it next week. You don't know when the gestation period will be over. You don't know when the period of repentance will be over. The only time you have is now. The only time you have is now. And trust in his before the gate of repentance closes. Before the gate of repentance closes, this is the time to come to Jesus. Doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter your religion, it doesn't matter what you have practiced before. What matters is what you do from this moment on. Your life is about to be touched. Your life is about to change. Your sins are about to be forgiven. They are about to be washed by the precious blood of the Lamb. I want you as you're here, start talking to Jesus. Start talking to Jesus. Start talking to Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming. 
counselors have been, they need to take a step forward so that there's space at the back. Let them take a step forward so that there's space at the back. Come to this altar. You're not coming to a woman. You're coming to Jesus. I want you to understand. That's okay. That's okay. Just to keep space at the back. You're coming to Jesus. You are coming to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming. There are some of you that are still seated. And there's an argument going on in your spirit. You're saying, should I, should I not? Don't let the devil cheat you. Keep coming to Jesus. We are waiting for you. Keep coming. Run to Jesus. This is your salvation. This is the change. You might have been in court. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the abortion. Whatever it is you have done, it doesn't matter. One bit. This is forgiveness season. This is forgiveness period. Before the gestation period is over. Keep coming. Keep coming. All the way to the side. There are more people coming to Jesus. If we can clear those chairs so that people can stand at the sides. Keep coming to Jesus. Keep coming to Jesus. If you're already here, start talking to Jesus. I see some of you already crying. It is Jesus that is doing that job. You're already crying and repenting. It is Jesus that is working in your heart. If you're out here, I want you to pray. I want you to begin to talk to Jesus. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, tell him, forgive me. Tell him, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. If you're already out here, keep coming, keep coming. If you're already out here, start praying, start talking to Jesus. Start talking to Jesus, start talking to Jesus. So forgive me. While the others are still coming. There's this space by the side, on the left and on my right, there's this space. So they can join by the sides. There's this where the chairs have been cleared. You can join by the sides. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Genuine conviction, Holy Ghost. Genuine conviction. Only you can convict the hearts of men genuinely. Don't come here because others are coming. Don't come because others are coming. Come because you heard the message and you want to receive salvation. Keep coming. We're still waiting for you. Jesus is standing here to receive you. He's standing here. He's going to cleanse you. He's going to wash you with the blood of Jesus. And we're going to take you through a program that is going to disciple you. We're going to take you to a program that is going to disciple you. But the first thing, first, is to receive Jesus. And then we're going to pray for you if you are sick and you are in need of healing. We're going to pray for you. But first come to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit that works in the hearts of men. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep coming. Oh, hallelujah. We give Jesus praise. If you're out here, start talking to Jesus. Bow your head and start praying. Say, God, forgive me. Forgive me, please help me. Close your eyes and pray. Close your eyes and pray. Don't look at this auntie anymore. Don't look at me anymore. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Say, Jesus, please forgive me. Help me. Forgive me. Give me a new page. Give me a new life. As you're here, start praying. There's even space on my left. Some of those will come in. I don't think there's space anymore at the back. We can take some people here. And on this side, left and right, we can feel the whole of this place. You're coming to surrender to Jesus. You're coming to surrender to Jesus. Keep coming. Keep coming, please. Keep coming. Run to him. Run to Jesus. The only one that promised to save 
and to deliver and to heal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pray. Close your eyes and talk to Jesus. He's about to become your father. He's about to become your king and your Lord. Your life is about to change. Jesus is about to select Paul. He's about to select radicals for him. He's about to select radicals for him. He's about to select people that are going to go back to their schools and make a difference. He's selecting people, future presidents, future governors he wants to pour himself into. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you are out here, I want you to pray. I think everybody is giving a life. I'm just going to count number three. At number three, I'm going to pray. That means I'm giving you, if you are seated, an opportunity, the last opportunity for today, to give your heart to Jesus before the effect of what you have done. Before the effect. Before the effect. Before the effect. One, before the effect of seeds sown, before they show up, you need to come to Jesus. Two, at the count of three, I am going to pray. If you are not here and you want to be with these people, I want you to run very fast before the door closes. I see some people already crying. It's the Holy Ghost that is working on your heart genuine conviction. When I call the third number, I will pray. So if you need to be here, you need to come very fast. I've called number one, I've called number two, and three. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, everybody that's here, I want you to bow your heads. I want you. Standing before you is Jesus Christ. Standing before you is Jesus. So I need you to close your eyes. Standing before you is Jesus. He knows the evil and the bad you have done. But he's saying, I don't care. I want to forgive you. I want to walk with you. I want to give you a new life. So I want you to talk to him and say by yourself, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I am a sinner and I have done wrong. Please, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. Help me. Wash me with your blood. Lord Jesus, please, can you come into my heart? Can you take over my life? Can you please be my Lord? Please be my master. Please be my savior. Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. I declare you are my Lord. I have nothing to do with any other God. In the name of Jesus. And right now, I break every covenant. I break every covenant. Say it loud. I break every covenant. I break every covenant. Ministers, please get ready. I break every covenant. I break every covenant. I break every covenant. I have made with the devil. Knowingly or knowingly, I break those covenants in the name of Jesus. Wherever my name has been written in any register that is not that of Jesus, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every chain that is holding me, I break it in the name of Jesus. Every power that is holding me, I break it in the name of Jesus. Every force that is holding me, I break it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm.